Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of Linux Proficiency, we're going to go over the basics of make files. So when we have very large projects in C or C++ or some compiled language, we don't want to have to remember every single uh, compiler flag and have to manually type in every single compiler uh, command when we want to build a project. So we'd like to automate that and this make utility. So if we go ahead and run man make, this make utility makes this really easy. So basically what we do is we specify a make file that has a bunch of rules in it. And the rules are how we build a project. Uh, and so make will look for a make file that's called um, either GNU make file or a make file with a lowercase m or make file with an uppercase m, it scans it for the rules that it has. Uh, and then you, you know you can execute those rules. So let's go ahead and look at an example. So for this example, we'll have, you know, if you're familiar with my C++ crash course, this is the first episode getting into object-oriented programming. So we've got an implementation of a class, and we have our main function in a separate file, and we just showed this off by first uh, doing uh, g++ dash c on implementation.cpp to generate some object code, and then we call g++ dash o on simple class uh, dot cpp, and we uh, also put in our object code to generate an executable called simple class, right? But we don't, you know, already we're having to remember two uh, G++ commands, which is, you know, less than ideal. And so, you know, if we've gone away from this project for a long time, even for something as simple as this, we, it might be, you know, non-intuitive how we're supposed to build this example. Uh, so let's go ahead and get rid of these intermediate files. So implementation.o and then simple class. So let's look at a make file, right? So we've got one in here called make file. Generally, you want to use the uppercase M just because it stands out more, or at least that's what a lot of people do. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we specify uh, every rule consists of really three things. It consists of a target, it consists of prerequisites, and then it cr uh, consists of a recipe. So the target is generally the file we're going to create. So for our first rule, we'll create that object code, right? So uh, so we'll create a file called implementation.o, and then we'll do a colon, so that separates the target from the prerequisites. And so this, to create this file, we'll need implementation.cpp, uh, right? And then we'll go to the next line and tab over, and then that's where we start our recipe. And our recipe is just the commands that we need to execute in order to generate this file, this implementation.o. Uh, so in this case, it's pretty easy, right? So it's just going to be this g++-c on implementation dot o or cpp rather right so if we go to the command line and we just run make right and we tab over it'll automatically you know fill in whatever rules that it scanned and found in the make file so when we run that it'll just run uh, whatever the recipe is for this target right and in this case it will just create this object code as you can see right here okay simple enough so let's build on this right so let's go back to make file and let's uh, go ahead and add another rule in here, this time for the executable itself. So we wanna create an executable called simple class um, that will rely on the prerequisites will be um, uh, the file simple class.cpp as well as the file implementation.o. Okay, and then we'll need a simple recipe as well. So that'll be g++ o simple class, and then it will take simple uh, class.cpp and implementation.o. Okay, so then we can go ahead, we've already run uh, make on implementation.o, so we'll just run it. Now you can see we've got two options when we tab complete because it found two targets, right? And then, so this time we'll run it for simple class and it'll go ahead and create our executable running that recipe. So we'll just prove that it works, we'll just go ahead and run the executable again, we get the same output. Okay, so now let's get into, you know, a little more into the weeds and understand a little more of the, you know, background details that you, know, you might need to know to understand other people's make files and make files in general. So let's get rid of a couple of things. We'll get rid of implementation.o and simple class. So when we run make by itself, we don't have to specify a, um, a you know, a rule that we actually want to execute. Uh, when we just do make, it will go ahead and just, uh, it'll start by uh, running what, whatever the first rule is uh, in the file. So if I just run make, 
our first rule, if we go back to uh, here, is implementation.o. So we'll go ahead and run this rule. So that's a pretty convenient thing. Uh, what's something else that's convenient? So what happens if I structure this make file a little bit differently? So what if I put simple class up here and implementation.o down here? Now the first rule is for simple class. But, you know, it seems like there's a problem here. So it seems like the problem is implementation.o hasn't been created, created yet if I ran this rule. Uh, so in this case, you know, what are we going to do, right? Uh, so uh, uh, because, you know, the first rule doesn't create implementation.o, it uses it. But we'll see that it actually plays a little trick, right? So we'll get rid of implementation.o, right? And so what happens when we run make? Well, it still looks like it ran, you know, the second rule first. Uh, but why is that? So when it looks at the prerequisites, it doesn't just look at the prerequisites in terms of what files exist in the current directory. It also looks at what files are going to be created by other rules. And since the target over here creates implementation.o, which is a prerequisite for simple class, it will go ahead and run the implementation.o rule first. Okay, so that's a good thing to know to understand make files better. What's another thing we should know? So what happens in this case? So like I said, you know, the target doesn't have to be the file name we're creating. It just typically will be. Uh, so in this case, what if I just call this implementation? So um, let's go ahead and exit out of here. We'll remove implementation.o in simple class. So now if I look at my makefile rules, I have one for implementation, not implementation.o, and one for simple class. So if I just run make, you know, it seems like, you know, magically, so to speak, it automatically, uh, you know, generated a, a rule in order to create implementation.o because it doesn't know that we have a rule to generate implementation.o. And that's actually exactly what it does, although it's not magic. So, you know, make is smart enough to know you want to generate uh, object code, right? So it, it wants to generate a file called implementation.o so it's smart enough to know, okay, well, maybe there's a file called implementation.cpp within this directory. And in this case, there is. So it will go ahead and make up its own rule. Uh, so this is what we call an implicit rule, right? So this isn't, this wasn't a rule that we specified. This is a rule that make created on its own uh, based upon the fact that it saw you needed implementation.o and it found implementation.cpp. Right? And so that way it was still able to create the executable simple class. Okay, so that's a good thing to know, right? Uh, but, you know, there's some problems with this. So make can't possibly know every single compiler flag that we may want or you know, even be able to generate a correct implicit rule uh, you know, for, you know, whatever we're doing, right? How could it possibly know everything that we need to link against? So in this case, we can actually make rules that don't that aren't associated with a specific file, right? So the target isn't actually a file being created. And the way we specify this is with phony, right? So this just says, I'm going to create a rule called all, and all isn't going to be something that's actually created, right? So in this case, it uh, make will assume that simple class will be a file that is created. And it assumes that implementation.o will be, or implementation here will be a file that's created. But if I specify phony, it says, okay, I'm not going to assume that a file called all is created. And so what does that mean? So in this case, so let's go ahead and uh, let's change this back to .o for just a second. So if I run make on implementation.o, and implementation.o already exists in the directory, you know, make won't do anything. It'll just say you know, implementation.o exists. You're trying to create it again. There's no point. I'm not going to waste time. I'm not going to waste your time. So it just leaves it as is. But when I uh, declare this as phony, this assumes, okay, well, this file, you know, will never exist. So I'll run this rule every single time. So in this case, I'll specify all as, you know, let's change this back to implementation, right? So you know, maybe I want to use my rule or my, uh, yeah, my rule for creating implementation.o and I don't want to use an automatically generated uh, implicit rule. So in this case, I can just do, uh, uh, I can set as my prerequisites implementation 
and uh, simple class. And I don't need to do, oops, let me get rid of an S there. So in this case, you know, I don't need to do anything else, right? So all doesn't need to have any special recipe. It just needs to depend on two things. And these are my two other uh, rules over here. So now let's go ahead and remove implementation.o and we'll go ahead and remove uh, simple class. Now I have another rule now called all. So if I do make all, we see that you know up here, this auto-generated one, while it's not immediately apparent that's auto-generated, we see that it does things that our rule doesn't, right? So we don't have this extra space here. We don't have a dash O as well as specifying an output name. Uh, so it actually did use our rule for generating implementation.o. And a lot of times, you know, this is a convenient thing, right? So we don't want to have to specify every single file or every single rule, every, uh, every rule we want to execute one by run so we don't want to have to do make you know implementation then make simple class right so we can just specify make all and then when we run make all it will just go through a predefined build flow okay so that's pretty nice so let's go ahead and remove implementation.o and simple class again and so the last thing we'll cover is the fact that you know we don't want to have to manually delete everything too right so especially when we have intermediate files like that object code so how do we get around that? So we'll just create another rule. So it's always about creating other rules. So we'll create another phony rule called clean. Uh, that way clean will never be ignored. It doesn't assume that a file called clean will be created. right? And it won't have any prerequisites because we're just getting rid of files here. So in this case, I'll do rm star dot o. And this just says, if you're familiar with regular expressions, you might already know. So this just says, you know, I want you to find, you know, any files that end in .o. So the star just means, you know, any characters before, but it has to end in .o. So remove all files that end in .o. And then I can explicitly remove a file as well, right? So I can remove uh, simple class. So now I've got a couple rules to play around with. So I have make all, right? And this will go ahead and make my entire project. And I can run simple class. And then if I want to get rid of everything and start from scratch, I can just do make clean and it will go ahead and remove these intermediate files. So when I do LS again, you know, everything's gone. So it's pretty nice. So this is a very basic introduction to make files and how to create, you know, while a simple, fairly comprehensive example. Um, there's other things we can do to make this more general. So maybe, you know, if we have a, a ton of C++ files in a directory, we don't want to say have a, uh, you know, maybe an individual make file or an individual uh, rule for every single uh, CPP file. So it turns out we can generalize this a lot more and we can create a rule that says, you know, for every CPP file or for every C file or for every, you know, CUDA file, a .cu file, I want you to generate object code for it. So we'll see how to do that as well in later videos. But that's going to do it for this episode. As always, feel free to go to my GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch, um, where I list all the code that I've used here. So uh, we've got also the code for say CUDA programming, C++, etc. So feel free to go to uh, Linux proficiency. And we've got my email here in case you have any questions or, you know, anything that any examples maybe you want. And then we've got our example from today, right? So our make file and, uh, the small little project that we're playing around with. But that's going to do, go ahead and do it for today. I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.